you think music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Your host is a dating strategist and writer who coaches singles on how to find love. Her book, D is for Dating, column on J-Date, and many TV appearances have helped hundreds of daters make a match. Whether you're single, married, dating, or anything in between, get ready for a conscious conversation about love in the modern world. Get ready for Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D, where we take a modern approach to dating and relationships. They call me Dear Mrs. D, and when it comes to dating, love, and romance, I'm here for you. If you need an answer to a burning question or you just want to share your story, contact us anytime. We are on the UBN radio chat roll, which you can sign into with Twitter or Facebook, or you can give us a call anytime throughout the hour at 323-284-7826. So I'm joined today in the studio by producer Natasha and producer Carolyn. How are you doing, Demona? I'm, I'm good. I'm hot. It's been a hot week. Yes, it has. <laughs> but thank God today we can breathe again. So I'm I, excited. Yes, it's, it's good. And it's going into the 4th of July weekend. So any big plans? To I'm sure you're much. doing something crazy. She's always doing something crazy. <laughs> you're going you're, you're gonna to be cooking and barbecuing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like going to like a, a roller derby. <laughs> a roller derby. A, a roller derby. Like a, a, yeah, a boat roller derby. Fireworks blast off something <laughs> <laughs> a lot of myself back no but really no 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 crazy plans i'm going on a no boat. you really <laughs> 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 of course you are okay. well if you get wow. seasick i love c bands those c bands good tip fantastic. great tip um i it's my daughter's third birthday this week so oh happy, happy birthday party. mommy yeah. happy birthday <laughs> Um, and also, it's the 10th anniversary of my husband and I meeting online. So Wow. Mm, I know. Hard to believe it. The, the funny thing is, when we first met, it was right before 4th of July. And he said, it, we, he kind of tried to play it cool. I just found the, the email, the original email he sent me from 10 years ago. And he was like, oh, let's meet after the weekend because, you know, I got all these barbecues to go to <laughs> and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I got barbecues, too. I'm really popular as well. <laughs> and so we met like the Monday after 4th of July weekend. And thought one another was really cool and had a lot of plans. And then the next year, we were sitting around like with nothing to do, twiddling your thumbs, and we're like, "So where are all those barbecues that you had?" <laughs> Turns out, yeah, yeah, yeah. should have hung out. And now we got all of these invites this year, and we can't go because we got this baby. Oh, well, you know, you could bring a child to a Fourth of July party, but I just, yeah. I don't want to be. So, what are you going to do for the um, since it's your anniversary? What what are you, what's you know, your hot special plan? I ha we haven't made it yet. Oh, okay. We we oh. have to think about that. I mean, we did our our actual wedding anniversary. We did like a whole weekend trip, but I don't know. Is that too much? Never, uh, never too much. <laughs> Didn't no you hear Luther? Never too much. <laughs> never too much. <laughs> All right, we'll have to think of something, Seth. If you're listening, get it together. Yes. And the guy has to come up with the plans. I I read something about this. You know, with chivalry, the guy has to lead. So. I think he married me, though, because I'm a planner because he hates <laughs> making plans. But. Anyway, thank you to all of you for joining us on Dates and Mates on UBN Radio. If you're not getting the dates that you want, if you want to have that 10-year anniversary with your honey, you got to check out my new video, The Biggest Online Dating Mistakes You're Making Right Now and How to Fix Them at DearMrsD.com. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Dear Mrs. D. You can like me there and join in the Dates and Mates conversation. Speaking of conversations... I am excited to have one today with one of LA's most interesting people. <laughs> I recently met today's guest at the iDate conference in Los Angeles where he has become a frequent speaker and predictor of online dating trends, if I can say that. Um, he really knows a lot about the online dating industry, but he's also a member of the High IQ Society, Mensa, and he is a certified financial planner and a self-made millionaire by the time he turned 30. You look like you're like 30 right oh, now. Yeah. Or like 25. <laughs> <laughs> He's also been a former guest on Bravo's The Millionaire Matchmaker, and he owns a network of niche dating sites, including EliteGlobalDating.com and Millionaire Meeting. Meeting. Millionaire Meeting. Yeah. Com. Mm. He's written a book on the subject. It's called The Guru's Guide to Online Dating. You can find it on Amazon. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Ty Lopez. Woo! Glad to be here. Thanks yeah. for Exciting. joining us. <laughs> So you own a network of niche dating sites. Yes. You're, you're an investor in a network of niche dating sites. I used to own a whole bunch of nightclubs, and uh, 
but I lived on the East Coast. So when I moved back to California, I was I sold the nightclubs and I was like, what can I do that's I like that social vibe and I said what can I do that's similar and uh, I stumbled on online dating I was like that's gonna be my next thing okay. so um, yeah we we tried to figure out how we'd come into the market because there was the match.coms the eHarmonies all the big sites so I realized that dating is intrinsically very niche like everybody has their perfect guy or perfect girl so I was like I'm gonna make a site or a series of sites that's just for what each individual person might want. So we made a site for dating blonde people and dating Latin people or dating millionaires, dating models, just whatever we could think of, we made a site for that. So we put them all together into a big network. We probably have 40 or 50 sites. So you have like a buffet. A buffet, (laughs) there you go. Do you have people that are on multiple sites? They're like, well, I wanna date blondes, but I also wanna date models. Yes, there are some. Although most people get burned out on too many sites. I I read the average person tries three or four dating sites. Um, In their lifetime or at a time? At any time, people are usually on two sites. But what they usually do is pick one mainstream site, like an eHarmony or a Match, and then they'll take one, you know, smaller site. So that's actually what I recommend because I say it's like being in two bars at the same time. Right. <laughs> so it's like if you're in one bar, your perfect mate could be across the street at yeah. another bar. But if you don't cross the street, you'll never know. But you could be in yeah. two bars at the same time online. Yes, people do. You know, I actually read an interesting study. Uh, Harvard and University of Chicago actually said smaller dating sites are creating happier couples than bigger dating sites. Mm. So I like to say that little trend. I mean, but little, wh- why Why did they say it was creating the happiness for... Uh, well, what they did is they, they found where's the best place to meet your... They, they took 19,000 people mm-hmm. that were married and said, where did you meet? And then they tracked the happiness. Gotcha. It's very counterintuitive. Like work was a bad place. Most people that met at work were much less happy. The best place was a childhood friend. People oh. who had met, who married their childhood friend. But second was online dating. Yeah. 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 Bars were horrible. Um, <laughs> blind dates were bad. So a lot of, you know, what I see, what I also see happening in terms socially um, is that there's a very fragmented society we have now. People mm-hmm. are not growing up with people. Uh, it's hard to marry someone you knew because they probably live five, ten thousand 10,000 miles away mm-hmm. and so on. So online dating is important. And um, there's still, but there's still kind of, Freud talks about this cultural super ego where you have like this conscious whispering in your ear. And online dating still has a little bit of a stigma to it where it's like, oh, you know, you're a loser. A little bit. It's not, it's really it's diminished. almost gone. Yes, it's it was almost definitely gone. not cool when I met it's, my husband. But it's almost gone, but you'd be surprised how many people in society, I mean, how many women w- wouldn't even think of going online dating. So these kind of studies where they're actually finding that, hey, this works better than traditional ways, like work, blind date. I think these are important. Well, I, th- I think it's got to have something to do with, with values. I always say you're looking for someone not that shares your interest, but really is is looks at the world in the same right. way. And I feel like mm-hmm. with the niche dating sites, a lot of times, and with dating sites in general, you're really connecting on multiple levels, you know, as eHarmony says. But I think it's true, you know, and if you, you said childhood friend, like, that's if you grew up in a similar way right. that's also probably probably have similar values and you know similar well way the, the, the high pop so there's like three main hypotheses why online dating works okay so the first one is it gives you access to a larger potential pool of and people, that's what you right? always say you always expand say, yeah. your pool yeah. right that, that's one and the, the second one is they actually find people disclose more and more honestly online than they do in person no, totally. I, so you, so you actually, I never would have thought that. Yeah, you would think because yeah, people lie, though. you know, people <laughs> lie about their weight. But when people who go online are a little more like, and then the third one is like what you're saying, you know, you can pick a site that has like, if you go on millionaire meeting, you know, you're going to meet more successful guys. If that's a woman, that's her thing. If a guy likes blondes, as opposed to just going out to a bar and you know, seeing what sticks. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, let's talk about that for a minute because I'm very intrigued by, you know, the, the millionaire 
dating, dating. and right. you know, obviously, you you've participated in an episode of Millionaire Matchmaker. Well, let, let me just say, so <laughs> my experience with Millionaire Matchmaker, my friend was a casting director, and he said, "Hey, Ty, you want to be on TV?" And I was like, "No, no. I don't care." <laughs> but he's like, "Oh, please, I need someone young because they couldn't find any young people." And young millionaires. Said, yeah. So he so he goes, "Look, Ty, no one's gonna ever seen this show. It's a pilot." It's this new new show called Millionaire Matchmaker. It's going to be off the air. It's just, I need you for the pilot. So I did like the second or third episode. Then it's like, our episode became the highest. Ra- Everybody watches that show. I was in wow. Sweden in a small town a year or almost a year after. And I was went to a club and the bouncer sees me and goes, hey, you're that guy from Millionaire Matchmaker and let me in. Yes, <laughs> now I you're a celebrity. That. I was like, oh my God, please tell me. Patty's not infiltrated small towns in Sweden. <laughs> what do you think about her theories? Do you think I think dating has the most incorrect theories of any of the major human pro I, I always say, so I'm an investor, I do a lot of coaching. I do this millionaire life coach program. And I always say I'm interested in the four hard problems of life, which are how to be physically healthy, right? Mm. How to create wealth or make enough, be financially independent. Okay. Love is the third one, which is r- friends, family, and romance. And then the last one is how to spirituality, how to be happy, you know, hmm. in a non-materialistic way. But so there's a lot of knowledge on what we need to do to be healthy physically, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good science. Don't eat processed food, eat vegetable balls. So wealth, there's a lot of good ideas on how to make money, start your own business, all this. Spirituality, of course, is a huge, you know, Pandora's box. But when it comes to love, what happens and what I think happens is that people give advice that fulfills their own what they wish happened because love is very Darwinian and therefore it's not that romantic at the core right because it's more about the behavior of it all than the feeling. it's about humans yeah. and humans aren't that nice underneath the thin yes. veil of civilization so <laughs> no yeah, that's, yeah I agree with that Freud sure. talks about you know um he talks about most of our intuition is really just imagination and fulfillment of the dreams that we wish we had. So when we feel inspired, so I hear a lot of dating coach. I haven't heard your theory, so I, I can't critique them. But well, we're going to talk about them. Yeah. But go ahead. I think so. I've been running for the, since 2006, probably the biggest science experiment ever. I've got millions of people. I've got more data than any Harvard professor, and so we've been watching and forming our own theories on what we think is. And I know most of the people in the industry, Sam, that owns OKCupid and Marcus Plantfish, mm-hmm. we're all friends. So I've come up with my own, not my own, but what seems to be accurate from what our data, you know, we've have hundreds of millions of messages sent between members. I can press one button and start analyzing. Mm-hmm. So we've come up with our own. And I do, I think most advice is just so far well it give us a nugget of your wisdom <laughs> a nugget of my or i was gonna say a nugget but, but, of what it, i think is not accurate I but cannot. complete that thought i think most advice is so far so f- is so far off yet it's more like the devil's in the details mm-hmm. so if i told you how to build a and i gave you well if, if i told you to build a bridge across the grand canyon if you build that bridge and stop 10 feet from the other end, the complete the whole bridge is useless. Mm-hmm. So you got to have a complete bridge that mm-hmm. makes sense. So to come up with a unified theory, which is really what we're talking about of dating, it's not that easy, and, well, and it's also- very painful. I'm telling you, it's painful. <laughs> Maya, Maya, who's who's my cousin and and the soon to be CEO of the dating sites, she the other day was reading some dating advice from somebody, and she's like, "Ty, this is such BS." Because now she sees, you know, you see that. It's a scary thing to see sometimes. Yeah, and each bridge is different. So, you know, if you're building it in a different on a different terrain, it's going to be different too. So you can't right. use the same plan. So actually, I think we're in agreement in there it, on that because I don't think it's a one size fits all approach. Right. And sometimes my theories are not always that popular because, as you said, it's it, people get wrapped up in the emotion of dating. Yes. And my approach is much more analytical. It's a process. And particularly with online dating, you're selling yourself right. online. So it's how are you, you, people think from their own perspective and it's like, well, I'm this, I'm that, I'm great, you know, look at me. But they need to be thinking of it from the 
perspective of the, uh, the person, person that's, that's reading right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a marketer would right. think of how am I getting into the head of the person but, that's But that's that why product. they need you because they need to get out of the way and allow. Oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> If only people could get out of their own way. We'd all be happy and successful and uh, fit and all these things that you're talking about. Well, I think if people would listen to people and then the question is, who do you listen to? So you have, you know, you got to realize you need a mentor, but then you got to find somebody worthy of being a mentor. That's hard to do, too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's always been that way. I think, you know, with online dating, for example, one of the there's a lot of problems structurally with online dating so one of the examples is when i used to own nightclubs you can be in a nightclub right and you realize if you look around the room that all the women are interested let's say there's a hundred guys and a hundred girls okay they call that there's an asymmetry meaning a hundred women might only be interested in five of the guys in the whole room right that's so at the core people don't <clears throat> we live in a society that teaches one-on-one monogamy but it's not fair because most men are not that attractive to women so (laughs) on online and vice versa so on an online dating site what ends up happening on every site match.com okay keep it you get 90 percent of people emailing 10 percent of the people and then those 10 percent of the people get i knew this girl that was a i was dating this girl as a really pretty model six years ago and i said we were going out of town. I said, put a profile up on Match.com. I want to see what happens. It's just a little experiment. So we left town on Friday. <laughs> we came back on Monday. She had, I think, 1,750 emails in her inbox. Just based on what she looked like? Well, she had a nice, she was a smart oh, okay. girl. I mean, okay. she wasn't just, she, she was the whole package. Did she write the profile? Did she like yeah, write we wrote was one. Like, it was accurate. She was, a, she was young, pretty, smart. She was what men want. I mean, she had, so the, you're a guy who had sent one of those 1,750 messages, even if you were Brad Pitt, you might be on page 10. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem with online dating that's being worked on by all the people on online dating. But that also happens in real life. That's not just a problem of. So that's why I say, you know, I use a very, my approach to dating and wealth and all the, you have to attract, you have Mm -hmm. to be the kind of person that attracts what you want. And the people don't like that advice. Mm Right, because they say they need to accept me as I exactly. am. Exactly, <laughs> but that, but the hard truth is that's BS. Nobody, nobody. If you become what you are, so if you let yourself go and you're fat and ugly, I'm now some things like see, <laughs> no ugly. Look, ugly can be overcome by other things. I say there's twelve things. Money. <laughs> right. Well, it depends. So in our in the system, the mall. Yeah, the There's mall. Ugly people the people at mall. the mall, but they have somebody. Surgery. So. Surgery. Yeah. No, no. I, Which I, takes money. Men, <laughs> men judge women on less things than women judge. I say women judge men in twelve areas. So every time a woman meets you, whether it's online dating or in person, her subconscious mind does a quick st- scan of twelve things. Okay. When a man sees a woman, it's probably about six things. But the point is, if you're a man, if you're not good at a few of them, let's say your face, you're not that handsome of a guy. You you're can, not good at face. Yeah, your face <laughs> could, uh, could do without your face. We uh-huh. always have. Then you can make up for it in other things, and, women, and people will give you a pass. Right. Men, somewhat similar to that. Okay, here's Although a, a little bit less fair. Oh, I have a question, but we're, we have to cu- we have to take a break. Okay. When we come back, I'm going to ask you my question, and I also want to talk about millionaire meeting. Okay. And the um, the intricacies of dating for money. Okay. Or dating someone for looks on, in the inverse. Cool. <laughs> well, can you have both? Uh, we'll talk about that, that, is that as well. That is the question. <laughs> that is the question, producer <laughs> Carolyn. So when we come back, more with the owner of MillionaireMeeting.com, Ty Lopez. You can find him online at TyLopez.com. This is Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D on Universal Broadcasting Network. We're broadcasting live from the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. I'm Dear Mrs. D, and we'll be right back. I'm Damona Hoffman, but if you read the Huffington Post or your Tango or you're on J-Date or Match, you probably know me as Dear Mrs. D. 
Listen, if you've been online dating for months or even years and you still haven't met your perfect match, you're not doing it right. But don't worry, I have a solution for you. I wrote a new book. It's called Spin Your Web, How to Brand Yourself for Successful Online Dating. I started out as a Hollywood casting director and every day I would get a stack of headshots this thick and I realized nobody's really standing out. So I started teaching classes for actors in branding and marketing so that they could be the one that the casting director picks. So when I started using the techniques that I would teach actors to win their dream role, I won mine. I met my husband online in 2003 and I've been helping other singles do the same thing ever since. So if you're not enjoying your online dating experience, if you have not met that perfect person for you, you gotta spin your web. Welcome back to Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D, broadcasting live from Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Today we're discussing for love or money with entrepreneur and dating guru Ty Lopez. Again, I got a laugh out Can of we him. We change the subject real quick. <laughs> for love or money. For love or money. Well, I, I want to get into this millionaire dating. Um, if you have questions or comments, you're listening at home or at work or wherever you are, give us a call. Join in the conversation. 323-284-7826. Again, that number is 323 seven eight two six and we're also on the UBN radio chat roll so you can sign in very easily there with Facebook or Twitter and uh, producer Natasha will get your questions to us okay so um, hmm <laughs> millionaire dating I had another question too but I managed to forget it in the <laughs> middle of the break but it'll come back to me yes. but because um, there's so many things that I'm talking about um, millionaire dating so I believe in marrying for love. So I can understand why uh, an attractive woman might want to date a millionaire, but as someone who both owns a millionaire dating site and is a millionaire himself who, who is dating, has dated, dates. Um, <laughs> I have dated once or twice. <laughs> uh, what is the allure for a guy of dating someone that might be coming, just might be dating you just for your money? Well, some guys, so that's mm -hmm. not the only dating sites we own. So I don't. <laughs> right, I, don't I know, think, I know, I know. I think that uh, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a ton of guys that's the that one I that's talk how about. they see themselves. So right, they want to hold that out, and they know that they can use that to get a higher quality woman. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of psychologists, behavioral people go. The whole reason men try to make money is to get a higher quality woman. So I do think that most rich guys I know. It's funny. They're kind of like a dichotomy. They don't want to be loved for their money. But I had this guy. I had a party the other day at my house, and all the this guy, one of my friends, I won't say his name in Hollywood. He's kind. He's a young, good. He's a great looking dude. He's a millionaire. He pulled up in his Lamborghini, and there was two model girls that I knew. And he came up to me, and he was like, "Hey, Ty, can you introduce me?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I and before I had introduced <laughs> him to a business guy, being like. This is my friend with the Lamborghini in my front door because you could hardly get in my house. He parked it literally so everyone could see it. So when he's like, hey, can you introduce me to these two models? He whispers in my ear, can you introduce me the same way you introduced me to that guy? Say that I'm the guy with the, the Lamborghini out there. So that was his line. So I was like, <laughs> okay, this is my buddy with the Lamborghini. And so that was his like shtick. That's his thing. Wait, and how do the girls react to that? Because if you said that to me, I would honestly be like, uh, no, th I mean, obviously I'm married, but back in he, the day, I, that would have not been a turn on to me at all. I well, it's like, like Who's this it's horses for courses, right? <laughs> it's the right race horse for the right race course. Okay. If he was like, you probably wouldn't even be in that environment where he was there. You might be uh, oh, maybe not. <laughs> on a boat. What was the thing you guys were doing? <laughs> Roller skating Roller on a boat. Rollerblading on a boat. There you go. <laughs> Probably yes. If you if he rolled up in his roller skates, well, like then I, we'd maybe there's we'd those be twelve there's talk. those twelve areas that women look at men. Real quick, I won't Give go through necessarily all twelve. Yeah. Here's the four main categories: women look for physically, they look for survivor traits. Mm -hmm. So a man who has a scar on his face, mm -hmm. they found actually five percent more attractive than a man without a scar. Mm -hmm. But it's not vice versa. No woman with a scar does well. I knew a guy. <laughs> I used to when wow. I was well, if you have a big scar across your cheek as a woman, it's, prob it's tribal. probably what if it's not tribal? tribal. Maybe, maybe. Okay. You got. Oh my god! I watched this special on this guy that got a face transplant. Did anybody see this special? 
It was no. an unbelievable moment. I was like, wow, he's kind of cute. <laughs> he got an entire face transplant. And I was like, that is so wrong. I shouldn't even be looking at the guy with the face transplant. Is that the like, French guy that got a dog attack or something like that? No, that was, I think that was a woman, the okay. French woman. But no, this is a guy in... Um, Iraq or something? Uh, no, he he's... I think he's like... It was in New... No, they had the surgery in Baltimore. Oh, okay. I think he came from one of those southern states <laughs> one of those <laughs> sorry <southern> carolyn <laughs> but he had a lot a, of them so I don't, I don't i'm sure i don't know which state it is he had a shotgun that oh. backfired and he basically yeah. lost his whole face but then you know as a dating coach i'm thinking like wow that guy it took 15 years to get the face transplant i'm thinking he has to basically learn how to date it yeah. happened when he was 21 he had no well idea. the good news is for a man like you said women don't look like that <laughs> see he shows he's a survivor he, he made he made, he made face. it through right and women face. like that so that's why women like you know <laughs> tall they like rugged they like bot certain body fat they like a v shape all the, they like a small stomach that all shows that you're a survivor you have high testosterone and stuff like that the other thing women judge men is access to scarce resources it's not just money so money is one of the most famous or notorious scarce resources we all like money because it's not common. If mm -hmm. everybody had a trillion dollars, you'd have inflation and no money would be worth <laughs> anything. It's worth a lot. But women also like men. Like I know a guy here in L.A. who's like the proverbial bachelor and he not that rich, but he's a casting director and he controls where women can get uh, access. access to opportunities for themselves. Mm. So that makes him very attractive. And that's similar to money. In fact, that's yeah. even better than money. Yeah, come on. And also yeah, guys that have here. access to to exciting opportunities. Like mm -hmm. a guy who like rides a motorcycle or high hang glider, he might have no money, but he's again controlling resources and women know if they get with <laughs> this guy, they're gonna have that feeling. So mm -hmm. some women prioritize money, some women want a guy of opportunity some women want just a crazy guy that can i like that you yeah. said that because a lot of people will say oh, women are just after money and no. i just constantly disagree no. with it because it's not but it is a very powerful that. one but you know i like that exclusivity is something that you know will will make me go wild yeah <laughs> <laughs> well so, so. look women who are don't like men for money think they're so um deep and i'm like do you like a smart man yes i do what did he do to create his IQ? The average man went to a the lot college? of reading. <laughs> no, you're smart, but when the kids that go to Harvard were born more intelligent, higher IQ. You don't have a low IQ and then think really hard. It's it's good breeding. So you did nothing for it. So mm. what's more virtuous? Admiring somebody for so do you like a tall man or like a little scrawny guy? Most women. <laughs> well, most women would say tall. I, yeah, yeah. And, and people are mad at but me for taking it, a tall one. But I'm saying, <laughs> what did a man do for his height? Genetic, what did a man genetics. do for his look? So what's yeah. so admirable of liking? No woman is ever made fun of if she tells her friend, "Oh, I met this witty, intelligent guy." But if she says, "I like a man for something he worked to get himself," she's kind of looked down on. I think that's uh, makes no sense. I think at the end of the day. At some level, we may all be shallow. Most things that <laughs> we you may <laughs> look controversial be, ideas here. Being on do you like a funny guy? Of course, yeah. that's like humor. One of the classic is, you know why women like that? It's the most classic, classic display of IQ, which well, is genetics. And it's when also, you see that you're looking at his genes. It's also when you take a risk by telling a joke or you know putting your right. sense of humor out there, people might not laugh, and you do risk potentially being humiliated. Yes. So right. it's also a display of you know, valor of being right. able to take Dangerous. that risk. Confidence, yeah. But most Confidence. of it's intelligence. Mm -hmm. All the top comedians, Dane Cook, Robin Williams, these guys, Robin Williams has the same IQ as Bill Gates. Bill Gates used his IQ. He just used his for. Yeah, Bill Gates used <laughs> his, his to make money. Fire. And, and, and you know, Dane Cook <laughs> uses it to, or, you know, Robin Williams uses it. But it's the same thing. It's, you, women are attracted to men who are somewhat powerful in their own right. Okay, mm -hmm. so what about but the, the other inverse? Thing, no, I didn't want to cut you off there. Well, let me just add excited. this. I'll add this one little <laughs> thing. I'll just say, um, well, well, I'll come back to that. Women, men are attracted basically to youth. Mm. So it doesn't have to be your actual chronological age, but almost everything that a man wants in a woman from looks to personality are displays uh -huh. of youth. So a woman, one of the biggest problems with women, if you want to give women the best advice, 
in our opinion, for, act mentally like you did at 18 minus some of the, you know, stupidest <laughs> stuff. But I'm talking about I don't the, even remember. the openness to life, the curiosity, uh, the willing to take risks, the non jadedness. You have to have yeah. pliability. Yeah, pliability, yes. not uh-huh. jaded. Um, and and well, when you talk thing, when you talk yeah. about physically, everything women try to do is revive youth. Makeup's about youth. Losing weight is about youthfulness. You're yes. you're about your skin. That's true. The average man, if you show him a face of girls, even the same girl, mm-hmm. he'll find this is controversial, but it's true. He'll find the face of an 18 year old the most attractive. So mm. now. Does that mean you have to be 18 to attract? No, it's not that simple. But what it is saying is that men are pretty much attracted to youthfulness. So you have to at least uh, appear to be young and vibrant, whether you chronologically you are. Yeah, I mean, chronologically you can't do anything. And that's one of the, you will not hear this advice because Oprah and everybody, it's exactly what Freud says. They don't want that to be true Mm -hmm. because there's nothing, age is like god you can't can't, it's like the universe it comes at you and it doesn't care about you so but (laughs) you have to be humble and you can say look there's plenty of women that i mean i know a lot of guys that don't want to date a girl in their 20s they want a woman in their 30s but if you stick a group of women in their 30s or 40s or 50s whatever Mm -hmm. age in a group the woman who's the most youthful will probably universally be the most attractive to that man i like that though youthful yeah everything about the the essence not about the actual yeah when dates. girls go on dates and talk about um divorces and this and how they that's the worst thing you can do be, it's <laughs> oh not because gosh, but yes. it's not because of jadedness <laughs> it's not because of jadedness see a man can do it mm-hmm. and it's not as bad because Shows a man's not ju- exactly survivor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the I'm, two I'm things with you here. I'm with it, you. men judge by survivor attributes female so the other areas that men are judged by are your ability to win friends and influence people. A man who walks in a room, controls the room, whether he be charismatic or shy, but when he talks to people, if people want to follow him, listen to him, and get, that's attractive to women yes. because that's correlated with survival. On the on right. the Sub-Sahara Desert, you know, 100,000 years ago when humans were first evolving, the man who could get influence people, yep. you know, he was attractive, but that's right. survival. Hmm, but you, and for you for women it's that youthfulness because it's the same thing a woman who's youthful yes, provides them they mm-hmm. work together yeah not mm-hmm. physically yes. but also mentally right if you are listening and you want to tell us what you're you are attracted to go ahead and uh tweet it out on the chat roll you can sign in with facebook or twitter at ubnradio.com let us know what's on your mind or give us a call at 323-284-78 Two six. I remembered my question for you. Uh oh. Do you think that people calibrate for their dating experiences when it comes to the next person they're attracted to? So, for example, sometimes I'll work with you know a woman that is overweight, mm-hmm. and so she'll tell me she wants to date a guy that's overweight. Right. Not necessarily in my mind because that's what she's attracted to, but because she thinks that that is what she can or that they won't judge her either or that they won't judge her Mm -hmm. so do you think that that that's a factor in how people make their decisions about you know who they go out with and who they're attracted to neuroses are one of the biggest (laughs) i mean that's what that is that's classic (laughs) neuroses we all deal with three external forces we're afraid of nature because it can kill us with the storm or being cold Mm -hmm. it can we're afraid of other people being rejected mm, of course. loss mm-hmm. of love right mm-hmm. that's classic neurosis and the last one is we're afraid of ourself we're afraid of our guilty conscious so in that case that woman is going i don't want to lose have the feeling that i lose love so i'm going to find a guy that's got a low probability of rejecting me do i think that's a good plan in a sense yes for societally no i think the best way that woman should look at it is i deserve a better man or I could deserve a better man. I don't now, but lose weight. Not that hard. Well, you know, easy. It's easy healthier. Just, you live longer. <laughs> Did he say no. not that hard? Not that hard. <laughs> because but people would be people. losing weight it's like not that mad hard. if it was not. It is difficult for women. It's, dif- it's difficult because, because of where we store human willpower too. is hard. It's hard to do sure. new things. But mm-hmm. imagine a society where everybody... You know, one of my mentors, Joel Salatin, 
um he used to just say you you got be an adult life is hard do that it's not that hard jim Rohn, <laughs> jim Rohn, the great self-help guy goes the pain of change is much less than the consequence of regret Ooh. so in the long run like it's painful to make yourself better but so i would say to that woman yes if your strategy is to not have a lot of pain and get simple love then that is a good strategy but i don't think it's a good strategy for her she's gonna die younger but she'll die with another with a fat man but she uh, could yeah but why love. not healthy person two well, it's people. a good point but you know as someone that has half glass has half gone up and down the, the scale myself you know i know it's it is a you know and there's other factors like if you have children and you don't have as much time to exercise as you used to i live with the amish for two and a half years by the way they they're have, very fit, aren't they? Because they they're doing everything. They have 12 kids and, and they're, they're, they're skinny as a rail. Well, that, that's, <laughs> they're always running around. Say, they wake up at 5 activity. in the morning and they're like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, we have to take a little break. But when we come back, um, I want to talk about, we, we talked about kind and of And by the classic. way, see, neuroses. I bring up hard to thing and people, it's tough. It's tough. Listen, I, Wait, I'm not going to call, call you out. I'm not going to call you out because <laughs> this is your show. But I told you, you it then. You out. Okay, if I can call you out, I'll do it Go now. Go for it. When I gave you something that we all know to be true, one that 99% of people can lose weight, 1% of people, it's a glandular thing. And <laughs> that at every level, it's better because even it's not just to impress somebody, your doctor will be like, hey, this is way better for your kids will get to have a grandma and a great grandpa because you're because it's painful in the room everybody tries to make up a theory of why it's not true instead of just going that oh, I'm is not true saying it's not true i i think it's it's true if, okay. if people did then the next person who asks you that give them that advice all right i'm gonna do that <laughs> there's so much more that we have to talk about and now that you've called me out on my own show you can, uh, you can call me out i'm sure <laughs> that's you what's coming oh. up after the break uh -oh. if you're just tuning in i'm talking to ty lopez he is the owner of a variety of niche dating sites and a very smart guy, Mensa smart, as they yes. say. So um, if you want to talk to him, I will give you the number to give us a ring after the break. You can also find him online at tylopez.com. It's spelled T-A-I-L-O-P-E-Z.com. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. The dating expert, Dear Mrs. D's Facebook page is facebook.com slash Dear Mrs. D. So while you're there, like us and join in the conversation. This is Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D on UBN Radio. We are broadcasting live from Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. We're talking about dating, mating, and creating love. Don't go anywhere because we want to hear from you right after this break. <laughs> Guys, I need to talk to you for a minute. Are you frustrated with online dating? Are you tired of people asking when you're finally going to settle down? Do you want to meet a woman that you could have a real connection with? If you said yes to any of these questions, I have just the thing for you. I wrote a new book. It's called Spin Your Web, How to Brand Yourself for Successful Online Dating. It is possible to have an inbox full of messages from smart, sexy women, go out on dates every weekend, and still have time left over to watch football with the boys but it all starts with you. If you wanna get serious about someone else, you need to get serious about yourself first. So let's spin your web together. So you'll fit right in, Ty. Welcome back to Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D. We are here with Ty Lopez. He's online at tylopez.com, T-A-I. He is a self-made millionaire, renaissance man, and the <laughs> owner of a network of niche dating sites, including millionairemeeting.com. Well, we have other ones, too. Don't just Well, that's the one, the, you know. Yeah, well, people want to meet tell, millionaires, though, so that's... Tell people about some of like, the other sites. What astrology <laughs> sign are you? Take a wild guess. Capricorn. No. Earth. Close. Earth. Earth. No, but I'm not Earth. Good I'm fire. Oh, you're fire. Sad. Yes. No. You said close. That's close. No, Aries. <laughs> I'm Aries, too. Uh, what are you? So am I. 
Aries. Oh, man. Oh, I'm surrounded by Aries. There's a lot of fire at this table. <laughs> Leo. Because, friends, I am a Sagittarius. Oh, Sag. Okay. Uh, okay. I know. Uh, April what? 11th. Me too. 7th. Oh, my God. You're April 11th? Yep. And, I know and three the, girls in it. I dated two <laughs> girls in one year that had the same birthday. Talk about trouble. Hey, man. that's crazy. Can't be putting Aries together. So no, that's why I, I dated should, a couple though. of. Um, I, I think I dated two guys that had the same name that both had the birthday of September 6th. Virgo. Not that good mm. for you. That's a sad. Uh oh. What's my your husband's husband? a Virgo. Yeah, I always dated Virgos. Oh, I like Virgos. I know. I, there might, must be something else no, in my I'm chart Le- because it's Leo a little weird. That you got to look at your moon sign. Once you're over 30, I'm not saying you are over 30. <laughs> when you get to be <laughs> when over I get 30, to be over 30, you'll One be day. more like your moon. I can't even play now. My moon. I don't even know what my moon is. <laughs> Do you know up. what my moon is? If I'm April seventh. No, it has to be your whole chart. I need your year and city. Uh huh. My year. Oh, Scorpio moon. Oh, you're like my mom. Uh oh. I didn't know this was an astrology. Feel show. everything very intense. Now I'm, now I'm like your mom. Oh my gosh, what a what a show we're having. <laughs> yeah, what a shift. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm not gonna bust your chops because it, it, w- it wouldn't be nice. You're my guest here. Um, Don't make so- a scor- Scorpio moon vindictive. It could be the end of me. Could be oh. cut from the show all of a sudden. Zzz, <laughs> just, the chair. This mic is just gone. She no. presses a button and the floor drops out. You are making generalizations, sir. <laughs> I love how we talked about all these very analytical things, exactly. and now <laughs> we've just slid right into astrology. All all stories end in astrology. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> eventually, eventually. Um, so we talked about sort of the the classic. Uh, attract uh, things that attract people you know based on the beginnings of society what about now you, you've talked about the fragmentation of society leading to a difficulty in getting mates right why is that and kind of define what you mean by the fragmentation of society well fragment by fra- like I said when I was younger I live with I've done a lot of experiments I've been to 50 countries I've kind of been trying to figure out life for a long time and when I went to the Amish I wanted to see what it was like I wanted to always interested in history. What's it like to live in the 1800s? Well, I couldn't figure out how to build a time machine. So I said, I'll go live with the Amish. So I ended up there for two and a half years. No electricity. Not what Mormons. The, People I'm get impressed, confused. though, two Amish. and a half yeah, yeah. years. No, yeah, I'm I with love you. The Amish. Amish. I always wonder why I leave. I love why that I show, the Breaking Amish. It's not true. Amish. Breaking Amish is a horrible thing. It doesn't matter. No, it's so not. entertaining. It's like Duck Dynasty. It's <laughs> fake. Very fake. I love Duck Dynasty, oh, though. Oh, God. You do? Oh, yeah. I think it's I hilarious. Want, we can't spend any time on my show talking about Duck Dynasty. Um, <laughs> it's been cut. Beep. I'm going to beep it out. I think it's funny. Beep. See? <laughs> um, so, the Amish, you know, all my when I go back there, it's like all my friends have like eight kids. and But they married a girl that they knew since they were in a one-room classroom together. That's a non-fragmented society. You know the family. You know what this girl's like, right? By the time you're Thomas you get married, not that super young. They in their early twenties, between twenty two and twenty four. Compared to but it's not like median age now is like twenty eight. Yeah, well now it's crazy. It, it yes. But Yes. I'm saying they don't get married at fourteen or something. My uncle yeah. got married at fourteen. <laughs> but Wow. Yeah. They, Wait, is your my, uncle Amish? No, no. My uncle the, my uncle and aunt got married. They were both 14, and they're still married, and they're 96. They've been married oh 82 years. Oh, wow. Uh, have they story, been on right? that? Uh, yeah, that's an excellent They didn't story. meet online, though. Uh, like, this <laughs> <is a> fact. <laughs> <laughs> the early 1900s. Um, <laughs> so society's fragmented, right? We don't have that. For the most part, you're going to be meeting people. You don't know their family. You mm-hmm. don't know them. Mm-hmm. You don't both probably don't even live where you were born. Even your friends may be friends you've only known for a couple of years. So if you meet friends of friends, you can't even judge them. So it's hard. People move around. Also, one of the biggest changes um, is women have changed more than men. Oh, That's how have we science. changed, Ty? Well, no, societally, <laughs> women have much more power than they've ever had in history. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that is a huge... I read an interesting book. I can't remember the name now, but... This guy, this social scientist, basically said the next hundred years is going to be the biggest experiment in morality ever in the history of In morality. Yeah, in morality. I mean, look now. Women, like you said, women are more and more women are waiting to get married, if ever getting married. That changes society. I'm not judging whether it's good or bad. I'm I'm not. But it is is Mm -hmm. something to consider because there are a lot of people out trying to 
make sure they all find of our parents before here had much more of a prime directive on how to live it mm-hmm. was like you're gonna do this my mom got married at 23 24 that you know my mom didn't live in this society. so online dating is just playing right into this in the fact it's much more of like a menu you pick people it's much more a narcissistic approach right sure. so you're you're not really looking always to build something together you're more like who do i want and then they're going to kind of fit into my life not everybody but it's it it lends itself more to that feel a match.com or any dating yeah. site but that's how we're doing everything these days you know that's everybody right. wants choice you know we i mean even just looking at our phones our android and iphone <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> Uh, which you can yeah. get the UBN radio app on, by the way. Um, you know, it's it's being able to customize, customizing right. your experience for you. Mm-hmm. So why should dating be any different? Should Maybe it? it shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends what your goal is. Humans are happiness. I read female happiness has dropped in the last 40 years. Males has stayed about the same. Um, I think societally, I'll tell you, being at the Amish, much happier than we are. Mm. Too much choice sometimes. The, the burden of choice yeah. can yes. be horrible. I, I, oh, yeah. I, I know there's that's a true. very good book called The Paradox yeah, of Choice. Yeah, The Paradox of Choice. My husband forced me to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because um, I tend to be a maximizer. Is that what it's called? Maximizer? I haven't read and it And he's recently, an optimizer. But yeah. basically, the people that like they have to evaluate yes. all of the options before they make a decision. My husband is like, that option is good enough. Okay. And he spends about <laughs> 20% of the time that I do making a right. decision. My friend calls that a tester versus an investor. Yes. Some oh, people okay. just pick an option and invest in it. Other people got to test 10 things. And online dating has a lot of testers. But I argue that part of it is experiential because I enjoy that process of researching different options. Sure. But not everybody does, you know, especially with online dating. Like a lot of clients come to me and they're like, I'm tired of, you know, going out on yeah. three dates a week and I just want to. Well, the, the question right is, the real question is, which one makes you happier? If your right. goal, modern societies, pretty much their goal is individual happiness, right? Mm-hmm. Amish goal is like communal happiness. So if your goal is individual happiness, are you happier when you have an unlimited amount of people to date? Are you happier when you know you're just going to, you live in a small town and you're just going to marry somebody you went to high school with? They're basically saying, or India arrange marriages. Happier. More really? happiness. Much more happiness. Yeah, it's a scary. Goes but is against that because they don't have the option? You know, so it's like ignorance if you bliss, know if friend. you know that that option is not even there. That ignorance is bliss. But, and actually, well, my sister—that's a Minsa answer for sure. There you go. <laughs> my sister-in-law's parents are from India, and they had an arranged marriage. Yeah. And it's it's very interesting seeing seeing how they their relationship has evolved. Well, you, you look know? at it as an investment. Your parents pick it, pick someone for you. Usually, your have somewhat of your best interest. They're not going to pick some horrid person, but right? isn't it usually it, they're they're picking it for the, their own their own status and Maybe. your finance the family's financial Finances, interest. Yeah. This it's, is it's not a business well, I, transaction. It's not, not a always. love. India it's not, is not. It's not like we think you'll really get along with him, and so it's we're not like royalty exchanging cousins marriages. I think India is more. I, most parents have your some. You don't. You feel like that about your parents. Your parents are going to be like. What's great for me? I'm gonna stick a horrible guy with Demona. I don't think it's about. A, a, no, I don't. I, I don't think it's a, a, a trying to hurt you, but I don't think that they're really thinking like. I think they'll really connect on a deep level. Okay, so let's say that's true. Let's say that your parents have the chance to make a slight misjudgment. Here's the <laughs> other, so the alternative is: Do you think individuals seeking their own mate ever fall into traps of making misjudgments true. on the attractiveness of people? So wise, so wise, so deep. <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, unfortunately, like she said, that's deep because most people don't even think right about it in those terms. So, yes, uh, well, it's hard to know you're blind. I mean, we're all blind. <laughs> we're all blind. When it comes to love, man, you make mis- there's nothing of all the smartest guys I know. There is no correlation necessarily between being very smart and being smart with picking women or men. I mean, people. All of us make horrible choices if left to our own. But it sounds like you <laughs> did better than us. Not all of us, actually. <laughs> well, maybe before you met him, you made a few boo-boos. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. But I also, I made a very conscious decision to change the people that I was dating and the kind of behaviors that I had because they weren't making me happy. Right. 
So it's all about happiness, isn't it? Maybe. Making Something the choices like that. that make I you say it's all happy. about destiny. I don't like happiness. You're never going to always be happy. It's a bad goal to always be happy. Happiness is a state. You can't is always it, be happy. Hap- right. Then, ha- the definition then it becomes. You exactly. Become, you ever heard this mental game? I got a philosopher said, if I could stick you in a tube and it's like a bliss machine, you'd, you'd experience a perpetual, let's say, orgasm forever. Would you want that? Yeah. Non-stop, 20, non-stop no, 24 just, 7 <laughs> most no, people say no because eventually that no, would become normal right and then you're looking yeah you need like something you need contrast we're all addicts so i don't think happen destiny <laughs> i think everybody should go who's my destiny to marry because some days you're gonna wake up and you're gonna look over at them and you're gonna be like i'm not that happy but if you feel they're part yes. of you're building your destiny together then you'll stick with it happiness mm-hmm. is a modern shallow lie for the most part but destiny is that not a lie. Is not a lie. Because I said it. Very firmly. wise words to leave us with, <laughs> Mr. Ty Lopez. You can find him online at ty, T A I, Lopez.com. By the way, if you have some of your own dating questions you didn't get a chance to answer, ask them in the show. And you want to get some personalized Dear Mrs. D advice. The good news is that I'm running the Kickstart Summer Lovin' program again beginning August 7th. So you can find out more info at Dear Mrs. D.com slash workshops. Anything and everything goes here on Dates and Mates. If your question didn't make the show, you can also post it to my Facebook wall, and we will get you the advice you need on a future show. This show is a Dear Mrs. D production, and it has been produced by Natasha Lewin and Carolyn Holt. Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D has also been made possible by UBN Radio, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Huffington Post, Match.com, Singles, Warehouse, Your Tango, and J-Date. I'm Dear Mrs. D, and until next time, you can catch our archive shows on Blog Talk Radio and iTunes, but you can only hear us live on UBNRadio.com. We will see you again next Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific time with TV's Devin Espinoza, who is this year's runner-up for LA's Best Bartender, and he's going to join me to discuss <laughs> seductive flavors and the sensuality of food and drink. Probably going to be a saucy lunch yet again thanks for listening and until then happy dating in the future talk radio will actually educate inspire and make you think the future is now topics and music that affect your life from universal